name. Amen. Topic today is rules for successful prayer. The text is Mark eleven seventeen, And he taught saying unto them, Is it not written? My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. You know, you look all around New York City, there's so many churches. Even on this corner we have, we have so many churches. Is a church a church or is it a den of thieves? Hmm. Let us not judge, but you have to wonder sometimes. I'm going to be quick today. We, I've been listening to, I must confess, this message today is I've been listening to Kenneth Hagin as a dead man. But I've been listening to a message he had on the YouTube, Five Rules for Successful Prayer. And what he said really impacted me. And young people, especially, some of what I'm saying, some of the older folks will know. And some may not know. But it's all important. God described his house as a house of prayer. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing when... See, you may envision what church should be. But this is God's vision of church, a house of prayer. And prayer is such that if you don't follow the rules, you can be wasting your time. If you, you might as well go do something else. He speaks of, in, in verse 11, 22, he says, have faith in God. I heard somebody say the, 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 the Greek, the way the Greek says it is have faith like God. Who would like to have Jesus, Jesus' faith? Faith like Jesus. You see Peter and you see Jesus. Peter had faith to step on the water, but he slipped. Jesus never slipped on the water. <clears throat> it's not a question and answer. Just, just to have faith like Jesus. You got to understand something. Jesus has thousands and millions of, I don't know how many years from the beginning of, he has experience with God. You see, what kind of faith do you have? Do you have baby faith? Do you have teenager faith? Do you have grown-up faith? Uh, what kind of faith do you have? You know, I look at Abraham and I see where God... Abraham at one time was afraid to tell people about his wife. Next minute I see Abraham taking up his sword and going after Lot. I see Abraham undergoing a metamorphosis where he's willing to kill his son because he reasons God can bring him back to life. Abraham's faith grew. Some of our situations in our life, God is causing us to grow up in faith. Amen. You see, then faith comes by hearing Hearing by the word of God. Memorization of scripture is a powerful way to increase your faith. Talking Bible. Listening to the Bible while you're sleeping. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. But the, the thing that I want to be careful of. Blessed are the doers of the word. Not just the hearers. As much as I talk about a talking Bible. Uh, hearing the word is not going to be the one thing. That's going to, it's doing the word. Amen? Amen. Now, you, be clear, I heard Leroy Thompson say, put it this way too. He said, you can't have faith in faith. You can't have faith in your principle. But you got to have faith in God. There's a difference in having faith. You see, you might have faith in how much you attend in church. You might have faith in you reading the Bible every day. But there's a difference between having faith in God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. 
And no matter who you are, faith has some rough days. You remember John the Baptist? Cousin of Jesus, the one who prophesied who Jesus is? But, Je but he was locked up in jail. And he got, cut, they got depressed and he said, I'd rather he dead than sleep. Praise God. But he said, he sent a message to Jesus. Is it you? Mm -hmm. Or should we look for another? for another? No matter who you are in God, some rough situations can reach you Amen. and cause you to question. Deacon Clive this week asked me this question. He said, when, at last week in the Bronx, he asked the question, what do you do when someone close to you is going through a rough situation and you know you're praying and nothing ain't changing? And I said to him, there is heart, emotional feeling, and here's what you know. And you just have to know your faith sometimes. Because I see where Jesus gets stressed out, bawling out to God, saying, Jesus said, not my will, that will be done, stress and blood. No matter who you are in faith, there can be some rough situations. So, but you ultimately, Jesus had faith in God. And get this down. Get that. Have faith in God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's a basic rule. You've heard it before, but you got to assess something. Do you have baby faith? Do you have teenager faith? Do you have old man faith? Hmm? Ask yourself that question. This next rule, I remember I, at one point I was praying to Jesus. How many people pray to Jesus? See? He can didn't raise his hand. Sister V didn't raise that. I prayed to God through the Father. That's it. A lot of people praying to Jesus and that's wrong. You can worship Jesus. But you pray to the Father. In the name of Jesus. I saw young people raise their hand up. And that's wrong. Jesus is God. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Never forget that. It's a simple rule. It's very obvious. But sometimes you will be surprised how much it's overlooked. You also have to get a revelation of, who, of what the name of Jesus is. Boy, anybody ever just saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You feel that? Even that? You just keep saying that name, the name, the name. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Get a revelation of the name. His name is high and exalted. The name. Huh? Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I said? If you have, what he's trying to say, you're embarrassing my name. If you take up the name of God, God wants to use you and show you off and there should be a difference in your life. Oh, I remember this word from the Lord. He says, carry yourself classy. You'll make class easy. I'm like, what? I heard it though. You're going to represent Him. You look in the Old Testament, the priest was fancy. Yeah. I'm a bushman. I like bush stuff. I like pumpkin and dasheen and coconut juice and okra. Mm -hmm. I like shorts. One time I wore shorts to church. My wife almost had a fit on Friday night prayer. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord said, come on now. You got to start carrying yourself different. You gotta start carrying yourself different because you're representing me here. You're Amen. teaching, you gotta be, te you got, you know? Amen. So, when you start to represent the name and understand the name, the name, the name, the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. God's reputation becomes on the life. When you understand something, you are here to enhance the name of Jesus. Yes. 
He says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all the men unto me. Favor of God. This next step is critical. In verse 24, let's all read this together. This is so critical. Therefore, I say, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Lord have mercy. This one, I'm like, I got to be honest here. You know, sometimes I, I say to you, the more you think you know, is the more you realize how little you know. In the Old Testament, I see Elijah praying, and he's praying for rain. He sends Gehazi, his servant, to go look if he sees anything. Seven times Gehazi goes and sees. The last time he says, I see the, the cloud like the size of a, hand, of a man's fist. Elijah then. Proceeds to run faster than the same boat. Because he runs past a horse. There is a horse. And he outruns the king's chariot because he knows rain is coming. Elijah saw the hand of the cloud. Something happened. P push. Pray until something happened. So I saw that principle in the Bible. And I believe, okay, I'm going to pray until God show me something coming. Then Jesus talked about the, the unrighteous judge and the woman knocking at his door late at night. And the judge said, who fear neither God nor man, but because this woman wear me out, I'm going to give her, get up and give her stuff. Now I read these things and I said, that's the biblical example to me. Pray until something happens. So I'm praying over and over and over and over and over. And then I heard Kenneth Hagin really break this scripture down. And you see, the question is, do you really believe that you receive? Because if you really believe, you see, all right, I, I praise God this week I ordered a projector that I can go on the streets. See the Bible right there? A battery operated projector that I can just click a button, no plugs, and you're gonna see that on a wall on the street. I'll become Bible man then, billboard Bible man. <laughs> oh, I'm like a kid with the word of God. I'm sorry, I get excited. It's a different way of seeing the word. We used to do it before when the equipment got damaged and God, there were supernatural things happening. And I am excited. I paid for it. It's not the one I want, but it's, it will allow me to do it at night, but I want the one I can do both day and night. And I, I haven't got it in my hand yet, but I paid Walmart for it, and I'm expecting a text to come pick it up. I believe I have it, but I don't have it yet. It's not in my hand, but I know it's on the way. Anybody ever order from Amazon? You order from Amazon. You, you place the order. They charge your credit card. It's, UPS has it. It's on the way. You don't have it yet. It's the same thing. When you pray and you know God has heard you. It's time to stop praying and start saying, I believe I receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With the prayer of thanksgiving. Whatsoever, what can serve you desire? When you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. This is critical, church. If you believe God has heard you, we have got to stop praying and asking Him again because that means you don't believe He heard you and He's going to release it. The question is though, do you really believe God heard you? And you're going to have to know this in your spirit and your soul. But intellectually now, 
to ask God again and you know he's heard you, you know it's on the way. I ain't going to call Walmart again and say, did you get my order? They already got my order. It's time to thank the Lord. This is one of the biggest mistakes that we as a church make. But the question is, do you know that God heard you? Now, I want to combine this belief, this prayer of thanksgiving with what Achilles said earlier. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I heard Stephen talk about playing basketball and promoting Jesus. You see me do that, play basketball, and I'll shoot Jesus. He see me do it. And God starts supernaturally helping me. And then the other kids start shooting and say, Jesus. He's seen it happen before. And now he's starting to use it and beat me. <laughs> and you know, praise God. Delight yourself in the Lord. He give you the desire. If you can play basketball, have fun and say, Jesus. And you're giving God the glory that he's helping you to make the jump. I don't see nothing wrong with it. But also use your other talents. Amen. Boy, you do that, you get to the NBA, you start saying Jesus, and the camera start focusing on your boy, that could be a powerful ministry. Mm -hmm. Powerful. So combine believe you receive with delight yourself. In the, you see what I'm saying here? You have the prayer of thanksgiving going on. Right? And you're combining that with delighting yourself in the Lord. You're finding a... You know, a lot of us serving the Lord on our face is like, mm. you know, Deacon Gill don't really want to get the trick. Like, I'm, I'm going to just drive that to the people of us. Might have a big, big PhD and ready for something else. And in, in going, I know sometimes I'm hard heavy. God don't want that. He'll take it. But he wants you to come with that joy. Even though I'm tired, I'm still I'm going to church, man. Yeah. You know, when I was a boy, seven years old, I don't know where it come from, but I used to run to church. Sabbath man, my grand aunt. She, I don't know what, how the Holy Spirit. I just love to come to church. Even as a boy. And I, I hear my daughter saying, she you no, know, she worked that thing, delight herself in the Lord, and she got the puppy. So if we can come, you see, there's one principle, there's another principle. If we combine it, delight yourself in the Lord, and believe you receive the prayer of thanksgiving, and you're having fun serving the God, and you're praying in Jesus' name, and you have faith. Do you see the rules of prayer? How important this is. Now in verse 25, he says, And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your head father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. See, we as Christians, I heard Kenneth Hagin say this, we have learned to forgive the big things. But there's a lot of little things. There's a lot of little things that we haven't forgiven. This forgiveness area will block you. You will be believe you receive. You'll be giving thanks. You'll be doing it in the name of Jesus. But you have somebody up. Mm -hmm. Who is it you're not talking to? Who is it you see in church but you're just not talking to them? Now oh, I understand you got to use wisdom. Because there's some people that talk to them, you're going to end up in, in the police station today. Dr. Gill talked about the situation there. Some people got to avoid it. But you can still pray for them that God choose them. God give them a heart of love. That God save their soul. Amen? Amen. Yes. I've learned this. Never pray a prayer for anybody that you wouldn't pray for yourself. Amen. Amen. True. Never do that. Any prayer you pray for anybody, you ought to be able to put your name in it. Yes. If you can't do it, you pray in the wrong prayer. Mm -hmm. And you don't understand who God is. Yes. I have sons who make me cry, but I still love them. Yes. And I don't want to hear you talk bad about them. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a pig man. Yes. Some of those evil people that God's chat God love them. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Forgive. Amen. And I, you see, I've been going through the rules of praying. But I, I, I want to go into. I'm going to elevate this a little bit. Come on, y'all. Pay attention to me a second. Types of prayer, warriors. I don't want to pray. The class is... Okay, you have a bicycle. You have a, 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 a motorbike. You have a motor car. You have a truck. There are vehicles. Right? But there's different types of vehicles. Right. There are different types of... Not prayers, but persons praying. What do I mean? In Isaiah 59, 2, don't turn to it, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have had his face, have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. Hmm. Jesus will get some people out of the bed, get them out of the room, get, get up. There's some people that could have preached him now till I'm on, and God ain't listening to them. You're wasting time. You have to first repent. Amen. Sometimes, even though I, I can't think of the thing, we know we all sin. I'm going to pray, Lord, I'm repenting. I'm asking God, restore me, put me in a situation where you can hear me. Otherwise, I just wasted time. But no, there is another one that says in Jeremiah 33, Call unto me, and I'll show you Things which you don't know. Oh dear God. I have learned this few years now. How many people pray to God for the things that they don't know that God wants to give them? You hear what I just said? Yes. You don't know God wants to give it to you. But you're praying for it. Father give me those things I, I don't know you want to give to me in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Oh believe me you hear me talk about the seal in the forehead. That to me, well, I didn't know nothing about that. But it's in the Bible. I'm asking God for stuff I don't even know. You know, there, there's an entire life and activity going on that we don't even know is going on. They are in Jeremiah to come and I give you things which you don't even know about. See, a lot of us have a flesh agenda, but there is a spiritual agenda. So that's the second class of prayer. And this is one is my favorite. In Isaiah 65, 24. I have seen Deacon Clive live it. Deacon Clive tell me. The Lord said to him before they call. I will answer. And I saw Deacon Clive get in trouble. That same week. And my, you, if you listen. If you, I'll take another Deacon Clive story. But if you follow him. Or he, you may have heard it already. He was about to lose his job. And Bishop John C. Lewis told me before Clive called me, Deacon Clive in trouble. Deacon Clive called me 15 minutes and said, I'm in trouble, pray for me. I called Bishop, I said, Bishop, the man just called, said, I'm in trouble. The Bishop said, the Lord says everything is okay. I called back Clive, and I'm about to fire him. Clive, I said, Lord says everything is okay. Clive said something just changed the whole atmosphere in the room. Hallelujah. Before you pray, mm -hmm. the Lord answer. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. I, I see that with this church. Mm -hmm. I, God had us start before we even knew what was coming. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Prayers get answered and you ain't even prayed them yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. I suggest to you that that is the place oh, Jesus. that God you pray God to be in. Hallelujah. It is a sweet and rarefied place when God starts answering your prayers before you even ask. Oh, Jesus. oh dear God. Hallelujah. And so as we I touched on I went from this in, from forgiveness to show you. That there's some people don't make sense. They're wasting time praying unless they're going to pray the prayer of repentance. Yes. And then there's those who call and they will answer. But there's a higher level mm. before you call. God.
God answer. Hmm. And if you look at that chapter, Isaiah 65, 65 it, is, it is a future time. But I do believe that God will sometimes apply those future blessings to us even now. Because I see it manifested. I remember Deacon Clive told me that before. And I've seen it manifested in my own life. Anybody ever seen God answer a prayer? Before you even call? Mm -hmm. Oh man, oh God, how sweet that is. Mm. My next one is praying in tongues. Mm. This, you know, I, the Bible says not all speak in tongues. Every time I talk about tongues, I want, I want to say that. Not everybody going to speak in tongues. Right. Not everybody have that gift. And as I've said before, if you don't have it, you should pray for it. The military encodes, encrypts its secrets. Because they don't want the enemy knowing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. God, in his wisdom, is doing something similar. I found on the internet 101 benefits of speaking in tongues. I'm not going to read all 101 right now. But I'm going to read a few of them. Tongues is the entrance into the supernatural. So you can go from natural to supernatural. Tongues is the prayer in the New Testament. Tongues is a direct line to talk to God. Tongues is the believers direct access to the throne room. Tongues is speaking divine mysteries, divine coded secrets. Tongues is drawing secrets to the life's complicated issues. Tongues is prophesying your God idea in the future. Tongues is praying out God's plan for your life. Tongues is knowledge and secrets with help from the wicked. Tongues is the entrance in the realm of the spirit, the miraculous drone. Tongues is strengthening your inner man with might. Tongues keep your spiritual fit. Tongues is praying things that have been concealed to be revealed. Tongues is the <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only, only 12, 13 and there's 101. Oh dear God, if you don't have tongues, pray for it. Pray for it. But the word clearly says not all speak in tongues. And the last thing we want is for you to fake it. Mm -hmm. That's what gives tongues a bad name because so many people are faking it. Mm. But it is divine. Let me say this to you. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Sometimes I'm praying in tongues I have no idea what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But my heart is at peace. And I'm being, it is a, tongues for me is a way to be still. And no, he is God. He said, I'll speak to them with another tongue and stammering lips. This is the will and the word of God. Pray to do his will with skill. But as we read in the text, you speak and you don't interpret, you don't think you're a barbarian. So there's a time and there's a place. Go by what I say. Glory be to God in the highest for tongues. Oh, yes, you're praying, but praying in tongues. It, 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 I, I know Dr. Gil driving the van, but he liked when they were in the truck and go hum, 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 in that truck and he start revving. Mm. <laughs> it's a whole different world. He running the road and every man afraid, and nobody not taking a chance with that man with the truck. <laughs> tongues, you draw gears. Next, last but not, not last, but last two, three points I have here. Hercule Dagen said this. He says, try to find a scripture where it says to pray for the lost. He offered a million dollars. He said the word says, pray that the Lord would send laborers for the lost. And he had an uncle who was not saved and he was praying for him years fast and nothing happened. And then he prayed that prayer. You got to pray according to the will of God or you're wasting time. Moses, when he was interceding for Israel, he quoted back the words to God that God said. When you're really praying, when you got a serious issue, you got to put a scripture in there 
that matches your issue. See what we're talking about doing, you know, we're not talking about emotionalism. We're talking about intelligence, spiritual intelligence. So you have a situation, you've got to find the scripture that ma the Bible, you know, I remember that the, the, there's a book, a herb book, for every condition under the sun, it have a herb for you. For every condition of the sun, there is a scripture. If you don't know, you come to Dr. Gia, come to myself, and we'll search together. Search the internet. Find the scripture for your situation. Amen. And pray according to it, otherwise you're wasting time. Just a message that keep me in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Ah, uh, this one now. Matthew 6, 6. I'm going to end with this. Yes, we pray in church, and God's church is a house of prayer. And I'm not saying we shouldn't pray in church. But there's that prayer in our prayer closet. There's that prayer in secret. When you just shut the door and it's just you and God, as Bishop Lewis said, it's not no longer theology, but Dr. Gill, neology. Anybody know about neology? Amen. It's not theology, but neology. Somebody literally would find a closet, but it, not necessarily find a private place. I said that was my last, but I, I hope I didn't lie, but I just remember this one just came up to me. In Lamentations, it says, if a young man put his mouth in the dust, there be a hope for him. I'm telling you this. There is a prayer that when you kiss the dirt before God. Oh God, that prayer. Moses would drop on his face before God. I'm, I'm, are you talking the real dirt? The, the, yes, I'm talking the real dirt. Man is made out of dust. And to humble ourselves before God. And kiss the dirt and worship Jehovah. And bring our request to Him. We serve a mighty God, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. But... He says we must serve him in spirit Amen. and in truth. That in truth part is important. God wants you to follow his protocol. Amen. Thank you for your time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. There are rules in prayer.